Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for a special episode of the show. Uh, I'm here with Mike from 8-Bit Vintners, and uh, we are going to try his uh, Player One Red Wine. Say hi to everybody, Mike. How you doing, guys? Nice to be here. And uh, so this is, um, we, we've got, I've got the headset going this time, so I don't have to worry about, uh, shouldn't have to worry about the uh, audio dropping out and having to do, uh, um, what should we call it, closed captioning, subtitles. To try I just, to put down what I did. I was just thinking, Mark, I could probably, uh, I could make you feel better. I could put on my Xbox Live headset oh, if that makes nice. you feel better about yours, and then we could, you That'd know, perfect. Pretend, you know, exactly. We could just go that way. But uh, I'll let you. Yours look more official. <laughs> so, uh, um, so anyway, what what I want to do is, uh, first of all, I want to talk about um, how you got started. I I, I read your, your bio on the website, and uh, you know, I just think it's really gr great that uh, that you just basically, you know, packed up and and. Uh, left for uh, Walla Walla there, and uh, so I, kind of tell me your story on, on how that all started. Sure, yeah, it's, um, you know, it, it, I definitely don't have a, uh, a major wine background. When people ask me, you know, like, oh, did you grow up, you know, your parents all into wine? Did you grow up going to wineries? And, you know, did they drink wine at every meal and let you drink wine, you know, when you were young? And I'm like, no, I didn't. Uh, you know, I mean, really, wine was sort of a thing that you did at a special occasion, you know, my parents literally would, would be drinking Yellowtail today. Not that there's anything wrong with Yellowtail if you love Yellowtail, but I mean, right. they, still, they would be drinking that stuff today if, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now. I mean, they just don't, they don't, it's just not a part of, you know, what they're into. And so for me, it was uh, something that I, I fell in love with on my own. Um, it definitely wasn't passed on to me at all. Um, and uh, it, it basically happened when uh, I was just finishing up college. Uh, you know, I turned 21 and... Um, I got exposed to some great restaurants through a, a friend of mine. His parents were gracious enough to sort of let me tag along uh, on a few sort of restaurant trips and uh, had my first sort of really great um, wine experience at a uh, restaurant in Laguna Beach, actually, called Hush. So if you're ever in the area, it's a fantastic restaurant. They got one of the best wine lists uh, probably in the state of California. Uh, uh, the guy that runs his name is Chuck Rock. And um, he had a great song that uh, just, you know, did the whole presentation. And I just, I got hooked. I was just like, this is so cool. The history of wine, the, uh, just everything that surrounded it. I don't know, it just, it floored me. The pairing between food and wine, all of that. It just sort of hit me at once. And uh, pretty much from that night on, um, I, you know, I, I bought a copy of Windows on the World by Kevin Zerali, who I'm sure yeah. you're familiar with. And I just, I mean, my copy of that is just, it's destroyed now. I mean, I, I just, I, I mean, I, I killed that book. And, uh you know, went through it and through it, and then I, I found a local wine shop uh, where I was uh, currently at in Scottsdale, and uh, I visited there, you know, probably three to four times a week, made friends with sort of the owner and the guys behind the tasting bar, and I just asked questions. I just sort of got, sort of, uh, I tried to immerse myself as much as I could in an area that really wasn't, there was no wine stuff going on other than just, you know, the, the typical retail or, or wine bars, and just ask questions, and I, you know, I actually considered maybe doing the Somme route, and, uh, just realized that maybe those late nights weren't really what I was looking for. I wanted to do right. more. You know, if I was going to do something, I wanted to do you know something in the industry. And uh, so anyway, I, I was working some other some other jobs, and just things just weren't going the way I sort of had thought they were going to go. I graduated with business, and I was doing some sales stuff, and I just uh, I just didn't I wasn't happy, and it didn't see what I didn't seem like it was something I wanted to do long term, and uh, so. Uh, I basically told my wife, I just said, you know what, babe, we're young once, let's, uh, let's, let's make a go of it and go give it a shot. So we, uh, I, I did some research and I had actually been on a trip on my own through Walla Walla and uh, had heard about this program up there that they, uh, that, that's been around, I believe, since like 01 or 02. Uh, so it's still relatively new, but uh, uh, sort of the, the pioneers of the industry there put some, together some money and created this fantastic facility uh, called the Center for Knowledge and Viticulture, which is based out of the community college there. And uh, it's just, it's a fantastic program. It's a two-year associates in, uh, in science in knowledge and viticulture. And so I signed up for the program. We moved up uh, sort of on a whim. And uh, I, I, you know, finished that up. And um, that's sort of, here, here I am today. I'm sort of, you know, a uh, product of that. So, yeah, pretty kind of crazy story and uh, not right. traditional, but, yeah, it is what it is. So. All right, so uh, you graduated, what, this year in June? Uh, I, graduated, I graduated in, uh, yeah, in, in June. So. Okay. So, um, so with the wine, is this something that um, you have, like, do you have some vineyards of yourself or are you source, outsourcing uh, the, oh, the juice? Yeah. All of this, all of this fruit here in, in Player One is sourced, um, and uh, so I, I currently work 
uh, as well uh, in, in the industry for a winery uh, out of Walla Walla. Um, I, do, uh, I do their, ironically, I do their national sales uh, as well as seller work for them. I just got back from Harvest uh, doing, uh, doing seller work and things like that there. And, um, so I, this sort of came out of that relationship in a lot of ways. I, I approached them and said, hey, listen, I've got this idea. It's crazy. I have no money. But you know what? I, I, I'm young, and I don't want to wait 20 years to see if maybe right. this catch on or not. I want to give this a shot. So, you know, basically with their blessing, and I'll, and I, when I say and I stress a, a small amount of investment capital for my father, <laughs> just to sort of you know uh, give this a shot. You know, uh, I basically got the money to 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 you know put put this wine in bottle, um, and uh, you know it's it's. That's sort of where it came from. So a lot of that, uh, it's it's wine that, that we produce. Uh, you know, I produce in collaboration uh, with with my boss, uh, Casey McClellan um, of Seven Hills Winery, and um, you know they've just been so gracious to me. So this is uh, this is you know it's it's completely separate from Seven Hills. This is my my wine. I own the uh, I own the wine. I own the um, you know the the, I, the IP the the actual um, you know the brand itself. And so it's just. Uh, but yeah, this is you know a direct result of them sort of being gracious enough to sort of see my uh, my passion and uh, my excitement to try to do something new uh, in the industry, and that's really what I've I've tried to do. That's really what this is a direct result of is just um, in my short time in the industry, just seeing um, seeing a lot of I, I want to be careful. I, I see a lot of sameness uh, in the industry a lot, and a lot of that is good. A lot of there's a lot of great tradition and a lot of great and there those. You know, wineries are successful for a reason, and they don't have to come up with kitschy ideas and you know marketing ideas and things like that. Their wine sells. And uh, but what I did notice was is that a lot of newer wineries, there's a lot of wine on the shelves. And how do you separate yourself in a sea full of uh, you know wine labels when a lot of people who aren't familiar with wine and don't want to spend the time to go and research really go into a store and they see something that they they connect with right away, and a lot of that comes from the label. And let's be honest, you know, I mean, we're we're about the wine. We love wine. I love wine, or I wouldn't have gone and did what I did. Uh, but I'm also realistic that there's a business side, and this stuff doesn't. It, none of this happens unless it sells. I and tell you, so, if I saw this in the store, I, I would immediately buy it. And that, and and that's know. what I mean. And I, I feel like you know, I, I wanted to at least give myself some differentiation in a, in a market where you know what, I, I looked at it and I said. There's nobody else that's that's catering to sort of the geek tech market at all, and and I'm not saying this is just for those people. I mean, I, I think the proof's in the pudding, and, and and I don't know if you tasted it yet or we're going to here, but you know the the wine speaks for itself. It's not you're not buying this is this is not some run of the mill cheap juice that you know I'm buying in bulk, uh, you know like that's just you know mass produced you know uh, from from some you know uh, machine harvested vineyard somewhere that's just pumping out you know. Eight tons to the acre. I, this is, you know, legitimate, uh, you know, well-made, high-quality juice uh, that I've, you know, spent a lot of time on. And um, I think when you do that, and and that there's some, there's there's more than just the label. Um, you know, I think I think there's a recipe for some success there. Uh, I hope. And um, you know, but that was the goal. As I wanted to create something that uh, that people could see and see that it was different. And and exactly what you said. Go into a store and be like. No way! Oh, that's oh man! That reminds me of my childhood, or it reminds me of oh, that's the TV. I've had numerous people be like that TV on the label. It looks like the the TV that I used to play games on in right. my you know basement or in my grandparents' house or whatever. And it's just like that's exactly what I was going for. Is I want I wanted people to get that nostalgic feel uh, when they saw the bottle and uh, just to bring back those good memories that I think a lot of us have, you know. Uh, but that sort of Twenty to you know uh, twenty one I should say uh, to to sort of forty year old range and you know even older whatever that sort of have those memories of either growing up with an Atari or Nintendo and those kind of things and just there's just there's a lot of good memories around those things and I, I think it's just fun it's a it's a fun thing to 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 talk about and, and laugh about at parties and things and I think this is this this fits that that niche in a, in a really cool way so I do I do uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn down the light just a little bit because sure, yeah. with, with uh, my lack of hair. We don't need to completely blind everybody. <laughs> okay, that should be a little bit better. Oh, you're um, good. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, this is – it's kind of a similar thing. You know, when, when I came up with the idea of what I do here, um, I was in a world market and I saw a wine that said 337, and I literally thought it was 1337. And right. I rushed over. I didn't buy it immediately because it wasn't 1337. Um, 
but I bought the the website name that day in the yep. checkout at at World Market. So um, I, I thought the same thing. This is a perfect idea if you can create uh, wines like this, and that is the ultimate goal is to create a label. Um, but uh, you know, with the with the what I do here to me is more of a way to uh, get the name out and also just to help with my own knowledge of wine because. You know, I, I don't come from a wine background. I, you know, I, I am in food and beverage. I'm in restaurants, uh, but all my stuff's casual dining. So it's not like I'm in a fine dining environment where I, I'm exposed to a lot of great wines. It's whatever I can buy, or if I happen to go someplace and someone says, "Hey, you got to try this." You know, I've, I've made some contacts over the weekend that uh, hopefully we'll be trying some really nice wines. Not cool. the, not you know, not my ten dollar bottles and and you know fifteen dollar bottles. You know, maybe something that's a lot more pricier. Um, because you know, at the same time, I don't have you know the uh, the resources to be buying sure. hundred dollar bottles of wine. Well, I and, think that, that's and what's great about this industry is that there is there really is something for everybody now. I think for sort of all price ranges and and all sort of you know demographics and things like that. And I, I hate to look at the industry in now in those sort of you know lenses of saying, oh, we got a market for a demographic, you know. But but it is you know the, the people different people like different varietals and they like different right, styles right. of wine and things like that and that's what's great about this industry is that there's so much it's so subjective in so many ways and um, you know which also you know got to learn to have a, a thick skin about opinion and things like that too and that's yes. you know, that's all part of it you know it's just like that, that's that's part of the game and uh, but ultimately you know it, it's it's I, I think. Um, what you want to have is people that are passionate about what they're doing. You know, it's more yeah, exciting yeah. when you can talk to somebody. I think that's, you know, why the, the ones that are, uh, you know, successful um, in the, for the most part have sort of that following because they've got this, you know, the wine is great, but then there's that cool personality behind it, uh, you know, that people gravitate towards. And, you know, I'm not saying I have that, but I think I've got something different enough that I think people can go, hey, you know what, he's, He's not just some executive that came up with some idea to sort of sell wine to techs. This is some guy that legitimately plays games. He still, I do still play games a lot. Uh, you know, I, I got evidence right here. You know, I mean, I got, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's part of my background. It's what I do, but, but wine is, you know, it, it, it's what I'm passionate about. Games are my hobby. They always have been. And I just think it's kind of fun to be able to sort of merge those two things together because I think there's a lot of other people that, that have sort of similar hobbies and, and uh, at least nostalgia for that kind of stuff too. So, oh, totally. Um, so let's let's talk about the the makeup of the wine your blend. Uh, so look at the website. I've got fifty percent Syrah, thirty percent Tempranillo, ten percent Cab Sauvignon, five percent Carmenere, and five percent Malbec. So, yeah. what was the reasoning behind using all those varietals? Well, I wanted to create a wine uh, first of all that was. Dynamic, uh, you know, which I guess is sort of a, you know, can be a word you can throw around. But I, I wanted something that I didn't want to do a single varietal, uh, first of all. Um, and I felt like all of these grapes, uh, where where I sourced them from, all grow very well. Uh, you know, Eastern Washington has, has shown a incredible potential to grow, especially some of the sort of niche varietals, which are now sort of mainstream, I, you know, i.e. Carmenere and Malbec. Uh, and Tempranillo. I mean, I, you know, I've right, got three, right. I've got three varietals in here that are sort of really sort of niche varietals for the a lot of the non wine drinker has no idea what those even are. Um, and so, to me, I thought that's kind of a cool thing too. Is that you know to put something that's a little bit different and uh, try to mix it up a bit. But it really came down to sort of you know during uh, during blending trials, just sort of mixing and matching, seeing what I what I had produced uh, you know individually, and then. Uh, because every every varietal was fermented separately and then barreled separately with individual cooperage, uh, i.e. The, the the cab, or excuse me, the Syrah was all in French, uh, the Malbec uh, was all in Hungarian oak, the Tempranillo was all in American oak, um, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we, you know, I've got some different cooperage programs too on each one, and then sort of seeing how those come together in percentages was a lot of fun just to sort of play with, you know, hey, let's just do something different. I, I think sometimes. People get a little bit sort of crazy, but oh, it's got to be exactly what a uh, Bordeaux style blend right. actually is. You know, like get, get creative. You know, really at this p price point too, underneath twenty dollars uh, for the you know uh, for this this kind of wine uh, that you know trying to sort of reach a different demo that's not gonna you know be too worried about like oh it's 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 this got to be this wine and it's single vineyard and blah blah blah. Um, I just wanted to create something fun, you know, and I I feel like it's got. It's it's definitely got substance, uh, which we'll get into here in a second, uh, because of the varietals that I chose. Uh, 
Uh, but at the same time, uh, under the screw cap and everything, which is another thing, you know, we can get into too. Um, it, it's it maintains that freshness. Uh, you know, it's got really nice acidity, and um, it's just an overall fun wine to drink now. But it's got the tannins, uh, like I say on the on the website, it's got the tannins and the acidity to really stand up if you actually don't have time to drink it the same night you bought it, which I right. fully expect people to do because ninety five percent of wine wine buying public does that anyway. So right, I mean, basically the 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 average the amount of time it takes for someone to drink the wine that they buy is around four hours. They usually right. buy it the same day. Exactly. You know, um, I mean, I buy my wine once a month, so. You know, right. I can have a wine that sits there for a month, or it could be sitting there for you know four hours before I do a review. But um, yeah, it's it's you know you, the, most wine really is meant to be drank as soon as as soon as you buy it. You know, upon purchase, maybe you, maybe hold on to it for a few months. But uh, unless you unless you really are intending to store your wine, you know, you might as well drink it. You know. So, yeah. Sure. Speaking of that, let's let's get into this. So. Now, on your website, the price point's $18, right? It is. It is. It's $18. Okay. Um, you know, I've, that's one of the biggest things. Obviously, I don't, I don't have a lot of distribution right now. I'm, I'm in 18 states that I can ship to, which is, uh, you know, um, somewhat of a hindrance. I, I feel bad because I get emails all the time, like, hey, can you ship here? Can you ship here? And I'm just like, I can't. State laws. Call your congressman. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but, uh, you know, so that's frustrating. But... You know, I'm, I'm working on, uh, you know, the, the, the cost of entry, which I obviously, you know, uh, I'm sure you can sort of understand. You know, people aren't seeing this at their grocery store right now. They're having to sort of either go off of what they see, uh, whether it's a novelty or not, and sort of, you know, buy into this, hoping it's good wine. And, you know, that's why I love coming on and doing stuff like this, uh, you know, doing these shows, because I think it, it gives some legitimacy and, and people get an opportunity to sort of hear other people's opinions. And, um you know, I'm doing some 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 cool stuff with shipping right now. I've got uh, three. Basically, you buy three bottles and shipping's free. So, uh, sort of incentivize people. You know, I know it's tough uh, with the economy and everything like that. But I started seeing people buying one or two bottles, and I'm with the shipping that it, you know it cost me. People were losing out on on getting more wine. So I just felt like you know what, buy more wine, pay pay less in shipping, and people get a better product. Because then you've got one that you can try. One, if, one to keep if you like it, and one to give away for a gift or to share with other people, and that's really what it's all about anyway. So I just, I, I think it, hopefully it works out, and people really, you know, can get on board with it. So right, and I can tell you, uh, when I got the package, I was surprised I had two bottles. Yeah. You know, at first, at first I thought it was two different bottles. I thought, well, no, he only has one. one right and now. then I went, that's very cool. So um, it was really nice. So let's see. So you know, the bouquet. I'm really enjoying this. Um, I mean, I initially thought I was getting some like hints of chocolate. Um, my nose, my nose isn't always the best, but uh, sometimes I pick up weird things. Oh, that's I've, you're not the first one that I've heard. <laughs> so it's uh, definitely. I mean, there's definitely. My wife is a big dark chocolate fan, and that's she pulls out that a lot of time uh, from this wine. So. And and I I kind of feel I get a bit of a creaminess out of it, or 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 maybe like a, a butter, a butteriness. Yeah, uh, it, you know that. Uh, there's probably, I mean, because of the American oak that's 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 in this uh, in in the Tempranillo, which is uh, you know the second highest population uh, in 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 this wine uh, percentage wise, um, you know, probably uh, it has to do with that. Um, you know, it's mostly it's relatively neutral. Uh, we only use about probably it's I think the, the Tempranillo got about thirty percent new American, so it's not over the top. You know, I really I'm I'm not big on over oaking my wines. I just don't. I, I want people to taste the fruit, especially since uh, you know Washington State, you know, does such a great job at uh, producing such wonderful fruit and getting such great brightness. I, I don't want to mask that by by over oaking uh, the wine. So I, you know, hopefully that doesn't come through, uh, which I, you know I don't think so. But uh, it's you know it's, I try to restrain on that. But to me, you know, I think I think there's definitely that there's some black fruit going on, and I think um, you know to me. The, the spice component of the Tempranillo and the yeah. Syrah tend to come through, I think, um, you know, and, and that's that's kind of neat. And I, I do think that there's a little bit of a smokiness, too, which tends to really sort of come through I, uh, on the nose a bit. So, I think more than really the butter, what I'm getting is, and, and this is kind of just reminding me of what Thanksgiving dinner at, at our house was. Um, we didn't have we didn't have turkey. We had a, a, a roast beef, but oh, yeah. we made some, uh, uh, or my mother made some, like, 
candied carrots. So there's some spice oh, yeah. in there, some sweetness. So I think that's really what this is what's getting me. Not really the butter, but there's a little bit of that 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 sugariness and there's some spice to it, like you know, you're saying. And that's really what I was getting. Yeah, I think that's probably, you know, the Syrah tends to do that a lot. I think there's actually a little bit uh, uh, from the um, from the Malbec that's in here. There's uh, It's so incredibly potent in Washington, uh, the, the Malbec that, that, I, that I've tasted uh, in numerous places. And this one, I think it actually does jump through just a little bit. There's a little bit of that sort of uh, uh, blueberry that comes through, uh, blueberry sort of slash passion fruit kind of thing that just sort of jumps up through the nose just slightly. It's very, you know, it's very subtle, but it definitely sort of just jumps through. But, yeah, to me, I think the Syrah, the spice component, it's got sort of a almost a meaty, smoky type of thing going on. And it really, what I love about it is that, you know, over a meal, we, we had this wine with my family uh, over, over Thanksgiving, and it just, it's great because over a meal, it just, it really just opens up in your glass and just gets, uh, starts to get some layers, and it's, it's really fun to sort of see people's reaction throughout the meal, like, oh, wow, I'm picking something different out now. And right. that's always fun with wine anyway. I mean, that's really what, you know, that's what we do this for anyway. It's, you know, it's for the experience and, you know, talk about it with people and family, and so that's that's a lot of fun. Cool. All right, I'm I'm excited to taste it. So we'll, let's, let's go ahead. Mike, I I'm like gonna, this wine. I'm gonna drink, <laughs> I'm gonna drink you spit. <laughs> I like this wine. Um, Thank you. Just right off the bat, I like it. I really like it. Um, I'm getting more of the fruits now yep. uh, on the palate. Yep. Um, and there's definitely this, you know, definitely some spiciness to it. And my mouth is watering. Like it's juicy. Mm-hmm. And you, you got the tannins. Uh, they're not overpowering, uh, mm. but they're definitely there so that, you know, you can, if you want to store it for a while, you can. So you know it's not going to like, in six months, oh, it's not going to be nasty. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's going to it's gonna hold up. And... Um, my mouth is watering from it. That's, that's, I don't get that very often. So yeah, it's a good thing, you know. I, I think I definitely I think there's a uh, a cured meat component that tends to come through a little bit, uh, which is kind of fun. And like you said, those tannins are there, but it's not like it's not. It doesn't fully dry out your mouth to where it's the point where you're just like, oh god, I'm, I'm doing this, you know, which you know makes you really want food. It it, it has that enough to worry. Oh, this would be good with food, but lot, not saying. You have to have food. You can drink this on its own and be okay, but if you add food to the mix, I think you'll be. I think you'll really be happy, happy. You know, I think. I think it's. Uh, it really enhances the whole experience. So I absolutely agree. Um, I mean, the the three wines we had at Thanksgiving, it was a, a Riesling, which was wonderful. Um, we had a Pinot Noir and we had a Beaujolais Nouveau. Oh, and okay. This I think would have been hands down the best if if, if I had substituted this with one of the other wines or substitute one of the other wines with this, I think by far, especially because of what we had. We didn't have turkey, so I think this would have really, really gone much better. And that's why, like I'd gotten the Pinot Noir, um, I mean, I could have gotten, you know, gone the other direction, well, not other direction, I could have gone even farther and gotten a Zin sure. yep. because, you know, that was another kind of traditional um, traditional Thanksgiving wine. But I was like, well, I wanted to have something a little bit lighter than, than a Zin, and um, so when I was out there, I said, well, I'll just get a Pinot Noir. Well, We'll check it out. Pinot Noir and I don't always agree. Um, yeah. So, but, you know, I, I, I don't want to sit there and discount it. Well, you know, I don't like Pinot Noir. I mean, I do. I just don't like all Pinot Noir. So. Sure. Yeah, no, it's uh, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I think it, it's just, you know, the right right wine for the right foods. And, you know, uh, you, know you like certain uh, producers or certain, uh, you know, areas that produce Pinot a certain way. And, you know, uh, that's the, once again, it goes back to, you know, you, you got to drink what you like, you know, but I think the idea that, you know, uh, you should go out and try everything again and again to blanket statement any varietal and say, I don't like this, you know, I, I'm definitely not to bring up, uh, you know, somebody else who does their own show, but, but, <laughs> uh, you know, but Gary, I, I do like his, you know, I do like his thoughts on, you know what, he hasn't tried every single insert varietal here. Right. You know, the blanket statement and say, I don't like, I, oh, you got Syrah in your wine. I don't like Syrah at all, so I won't like your wine. I think, uh, you know, but I think it's getting better. I, I do see people being a little bit more responsive to trying more things. And I think also the, the youth movement uh, in this country uh, to buying wine and being much more experimental with, with wine and what they're drinking and things like that, it's really good. I'm, I'm very excited, you know, when, when uh, 
know, people coming to the tasting room uh, for, for the other winery that, that I work for, you know, it's exciting to see young people come in and just be totally open. Yeah, I, show, tell me what to taste or whatever. I'm, I'm willing to try anything instead of having sort of the old guard uh, who sometimes just say, oh, I don't like, I don't like this at all. I'm not, I'm not drinking that. Well, it's just like, well, you're missing out. You know, you may, you may like it. You may miss something. So. Right. Um, the other thing, as, as I've been drinking a little more, is I'm starting to get some, like, some uh, pepper, like some green pepper, almost jalapeno, and anybody who watches what I do, they know that if you get green pepper jalapeno into a wine, I'm going to be over the top on it. I'm going to be so, loving it. Yeah, where, where do you think that comes from? Um, <laughs> I'm going to guess it's coming from, uh, well, I want to guess it's actually coming from the, from the Syrah, but you're going to probably it, tell me it's from the Carmenere. It is. <laughs> Sure, it's definitely from the Carmen year. Uh, you know that the, you know I like to think of it as more of a cracked white pepper, but uh, you know the the green the green pepper because it's you know it doesn't really matter. It's it's sort of That's you know pepper. yeah it's interchangeable whatever. But it's uh, you know sometimes the the wrong connotations come along with uh, the green pepper jalapeno thing because some people consider that un you know unripened fruit. Uh, but you know Carmen year just has that's one of its tendencies, and it's a hard grape to do on its own. Specifically for that reason, you know, if it doesn't get to ideal ripeness, you really, you know, you worry about overcropping and you worry about sort of, uh, you know, that if you overwater and, and it just there's, I mean, it's a very finicky fruit to grow uh, and to make, uh, you know, great wine of, especially uh, as a single varietal. That's why it is blended a lot of the time. And um, I think you're right, though. I think the pepper does come through on this, and uh, it's just that slight, slight amount to just sort of add a little bit of dimension to, to the whole palette, which is really fun. So right. I'm glad you picked that out. That's cool. Yeah. Um, well, one thing that I did want to ask you is what about the Hungarian oak? What, what, is, what is that adding to the wine? What, what, is, that, what is that doing to it? Well, in, in, uh, in all fairness, uh, to, be, uh, to, to, to keep going with this whole like, oh, let's just be open about you know, why, uh, you know, why, we, why we do what we do, the pull the curtain back a little bit, there's two reasons. Okay. One, one is a winemaking thing, and then one is a uh, is a uh, well, it's an economic thing. So one is straight one is straight cost. Uh, Hungarian oak costs less money. Uh, there's no doubt about it. It is definitely when new French barrels are costing twelve hundred bucks a pop. Hungarian oak is uh, is definitely a, a value uh, when it comes to buying barrels. Uh, but the second reason why, uh, and we wouldn't do it unless it actually did. Uh, do a good job. I mean, you wouldn't just you don't want to just throw wine in barrel that you don't think it's going to do what you need it to do to be able to create a great wine. Uh, but it does actually add this really distinct spice component to to a wine. Uh, and in this wine, it's it's pretty much only used for the Malbec uh, okay. exclusively, uh, and that's just a stylistic choice. Um, you know, we just uh, you know we do that uh, basically just because uh, we think it adds a little bit of complexity to the Malbec. Um, the Malbec vines coming out of Washington, so far, they're pretty young uh, in general. Most of them, I, I would say, uh, and this is, don't quote me on this, but I would say they're probably around that 10-year-old range. They're still relatively new vines, and I think they still sort of just come off tasting a, um, a little more feminine instead of the more austere, brooding Malbec that you get out of, um, out of Argentina and, and from before. So to me, uh, I think adding uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, of spice through the oak program, and once again, it's not a lot of new. It's probably about 35% new, so it's, it's pretty neutral. But just that added little dimension, I just think it, it, it enhances the wine, and that's what oak's supposed to do. It's only, it, it's only supposed to just sort of complement uh, and, and enhance, not overpower, and that's what I think the, you know, the, the reason for the Hungarian is. Ultimately, though, uh, the cost is really a big, a big uh, deciding factor as well. So, But, you know, it, it's, it's – if, if it was um... – you know, cost definitely has to be come into play because, you know, you're a businessman and, you know, you can't just sit there and, you know, just throw money out. And, and then because I'm, I'm sure if, if, if you were trying to do all French oak, uh, this would not be an $18 bottle of wine. You, you know? nailed the head. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You know, if I'm going to try to keep stuff, uh, you know, uh, reasonably priced, um, at, le at least on the outset, you know, I, 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 I want to keep. You know, I'd like to ideally. You know, I, I'm 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 working on trying to get player two out there, which will be my white wine. Then I've got, you know, I'd like to also keep that off uh, around the sort of the fifteen to thirteen dollar mark, mm -hmm. just to have a sort of you know player one, player two, sort of as my entry level, sort of fun wines, take to a party. Don't feel like you're making a huge investment. Um, 
you know, I'd like to do that. And there's, you know, that's, you're exactly right. I've got to do things that, uh, without sacrificing quality, but, uh, but are able to sort of keep, keep the budget, uh, in line so that I can afford to do, uh, to offer it at the price that I think, you know, will, uh, that people can afford, um, they'll, they'll buy that. So. Awesome. Well, um, I'm very pleased with it. And, uh, you know, when I saw the label, I just thought this was so cool. You know, brought me back to my Atari 2600 days. Actually, <laughs> mine was a Sears Telegames before they even were marketing on their own. Way so, back. Uh, yes. I was actually <laughs> just reading something on the Internet about, about some of the old systems and sort of how they were distributed, the guy, the different uh, companies that sort of did their own thing, and that was definitely one that came up, uh, the, the Sears sort of branded machine. That's just that's crazy. It's amazing, those, uh, just the, those different uh, stories you hear about. You know the original days of consoles are pretty funny. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. And, and and honestly, I went from I went from that console to an Xbox. I kind of skipped oh. the whole Nintendo S you know yep. SNES. Yeah. Uh, you know I, the Saturn looked really cool back then. I was almost tempted <laughs> yeah. to get that. It's, yeah, you um, didn't. You missed out on a few cool games, but uh, Saturn unfortunately had a uh, you know had a, a a sad death, as did uh, Sega's follow up system, the Dreamcast. So it's just right. you know. You know, hence Sega doesn't make consoles anymore. So there you go. You didn't miss out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I definitely did that. Uh, I, I skipped like a couple generations of, of uh, consoles, but that's cool. I mean, I love my Xbox. It's a, it's a great machine, um, and uh, uh, I got I got, got I recently got Modern Warfare Two. Oh uh, man, I played it twice online. That's it. I haven't I've had any time to play. So. It's uh, that's that's the whole thing, especially you know I, with, with my wife, you know, and uh, I gotta look around and see if she's here right now. But uh, you know, for for me, you know, it really comes down. It's all it's all time and balance and things like that. So you know, uh, we pop open a bottle of wine and we have a good night. And you know, she she nods off a little bit early because of having maybe a, a little more in her glass because she gets a little tired. Then uh, we start the game up a little bit early that night, and I play there with my piece of line for a, a little bit longer. But you know, it's it's all good fun, and uh, it's you know. It, that whole thing, everything in moderation, right? But it's, uh, exactly. but definitely, it's, uh, Modern Warfare Two is, uh, it's a great game, and I'm actually playing through uh, Assassin's Creed Two right now. So that's a, that's a pretty impressive game. That looks, well. that looks so phenomenal. It's pretty that's cool. Like, I've got some friends on that, you know, and I log in, they're playing it, and they're, and I ask them how it is, and they go, "It's great." And I'm like, I haven't even barely started Modern Warfare. I can't buy yeah. this other it's, game right now. It's time, man. This is the time. Uh, you know, this time of the year, you just get inundated with all these games. There's just not enough time to play them all. It's just. Uh, you know, this window is just, they just kill you with all these good games, and you just feel like, I'm missing out on all this stuff, but, uh, you know, either way, we've got, uh, we've got good wine to drink, and, you know, that's, uh, that, that definitely uh, takes the bite off, for sure, so. Definitely. Um, well, Mike, I, I definitely appreciate it um, that you, you took the time to uh, sit down with me. I know it took us a couple weeks, to, well, looked like a month, I think, or yeah. so, for us to really get this going. That's um, all, it's no big deal. <laughs> well, you know, this is kind of like my second job, too, so. Hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> So it is definitely one of those things where I have to figure out when's my day off or when one of my nights are free. Um, so luckily I had today off. And um, so I know as soon as we get done with this, I'll be doing a Wednesday's review. So this oh, is no. um, this is going to be Friday's episode. And then I'm going to do uh, uh, Sicilian wine for tomorrow. That'll, that'll um, uh, go into what sommelier school will be this week. I spend all the morning doing my little type of my write-up for that. But um, – you know, I really appreciate the fact that, that you you sent me some wine um, that we were able to to uh, do this over Skype. Um, yeah, awesome. And it's it's wonderful wine. And anyone who's watching this, uh, I'll obviously have the link down below. If for some reason you are watching this not on the website, you're watching it through one of the many players I have this stuff distributed on. Remember, there's a website to go to. It's at the very end. It's real easy to remember. 1337wine.com. Uh, but the, the website's at the very end. Uh, click on the links. Uh, buy some of this wine. It's really great. Um, I can see pairing this with lots of lots of great food. Uh, you could probably even do this for Christmas. Um, I think this will be a, definitely uh, a wine we'll do for Christmas. Yeah, it's a great it's a great gift item if you've got people that are you know looking for you looking for a creative gift item that's uh, you know uh, I definitely think it works for that uh, for a wide variety of people and uh, it's definitely fun to bring your Christmas parties and things like that. So you know um, yeah, I hope you guys. Uh, you know, support support what I'm trying to do, and because uh, I'd like to do it again uh, if if I see that you know there's enough uh, support uh, garnered for for what I'm trying to accomplish here, and uh, you know, follow me. Uh, you know, I got all the social networking stuff going on the website, so just come to it's you know it's easier uh, than 8bitvintners.com. You just type in 8bitwine.com and that works. Uh, but all the social networking stuff's on there. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me, uh, you know, on Facebook. 
join the Facebook page and uh, hit me up uh, for some Xbox Live or uh, PlayStation Three. I've got my friend, uh, my friend, whatever they're called, handles on the uh, on the website there. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm always up for uh, playing a little uh, multiplayer. So let me know. Cool. I'm always down. Definitely. I'll uh, you know probably later tonight I'll hit the uh, hit the friends list there on Xbox. Awesome. Um, so that's that's going to do it for today and. Um, as always, everyone, thank you for stopping in and uh, supporting the show. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me uh, an email. I was going to say a call, but I don't have my phone number everywhere. Um, <laughs> you know, feel free to uh, email me or send me a tweet or you know, send me a message on Facebook, whatever. You know, friend me up, all the links over here and all the other things around. Um, and uh, stay tuned for, um, let's see, I think I'll have a summary of school next week. That should be Germany. <laughs> And uh, I've got uh, what do I have? Some, I thought I had some. No, I'll have to buy some wine for Germany. I have an ice wine coming, but that's really for Christmas rather oh, than specifically go. for Germany. So I might still be at the tail end of Germany when when we're doing Christmas. But um, we've got. Uh, well, everyone probably already saw this. This is going to be tomorrow's wine, and uh, it's from Sicily. Which actually, if you're watching it, this was Wednesday's wine, and uh, that's going to be it. Uh, again, thanks for stopping in, and we'll see everybody again next time. Cheers. Salud.